Today's episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge, to say the least. But there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic, grain, and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. Well, we saw plenty of green on the screen in the grain and oil seeds on the day Thursday. A little more mixed activity in livestock and a fairly uh, quiet day in the outside markets. But plenty to take a look at. A few different news headlines to take a look at in the market trade as we talk now, we bring in our good friend, Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. Brian, good to catch up with you. And I know we were chatting off air a little bit. A, a nice positive day. Good money flow. A lot of green on the screen there in the grain and oilseed trade. Yeah, we, we think there we think there's good money flow. Obviously, it looked like there was some short covering. The funds have been very short the wheat market. So another update in the wheat. Got some single-digit temperatures forecasted. Again, for winter wheat country, uh, lack of snow cover. So that adds some uncertainty, uh, maybe escalation. If how you want, however you want to view it, but it doesn't look like the war is taming down. It looks like it's escalating. So I'm going to say mm -hmm. escalation with Germany and the U.S. Uh, 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 I guess allowing or or you know moving forward with tanks mm -hmm. and, and to Ukraine and how Russia might respond. A big missile attacks today. So it looks like that is is escalating. Um, we had some good export sales numbers today, uh, not necessarily stellar, but good, and mm -hmm. that's that's a big a big plus, especially in corn, which has been really lagging. Plus, we've had this week, we've had a couple of hundred thousand plus sales announcements in corn, so looks like the end users uh, taking a little more aggressive approach due to a shortfall and what will be a shortfall, I think, in the Argentine crop, and then a long time before that you know, the real core of the Brazilian crop available to the market. You're talking at least 90 to 120 days, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, talking this wheat market, I think let's let's start there and dive in a little bit more. Just uh, I, I think a lot of the headlines, as you mentioned, kind of focused on the wheat market Thursday. Um, the, the reminder, I think, of the tensions between Russia and Ukraine, it's felt like that story is kind of, you know, lost it. We've been desensitized to it a little bit in the market trade. And you brought up a lot of the funds who have been short, I think, largest short position in SRW since 2019, something like that, or, you know, mm -hmm. very, very short in these wheat markets. I think you get enough of these stories like we saw today, kind of a feed in the bull there in the wheat market. And, and, you know, maybe it's time as well to, you know, buy some of this cheap wheat, Brian. Maybe that's all kind of combining here today. We had some technical activity, had a double bottom, uh, and then testing the Bollinger Band. And then today, pretty good close, maybe above the 21-day and even the 40-day moving average. Haven't closed above those for several weeks. So you've got that. But really, you go back to uh, late uh, or mid-October, early November, when that corridor, the agreement in the corridor opened up, and wheat really took a big slide. And during that same window, you kind of hear heard you know, how, well how big is Russia's crop, and mm -hmm. what why is Russia you know cooperating with this? Uh, and it's probably because they had a pretty big crop, but it it doesn't look like from what uh, from what the wire services Reuters had indicated today that the USDA is not of the bias that the wheat crop is anywhere near what Russia says it is, which I think they're talking like 103 million metric tons and USDA is down to 92 million. So mm -hmm. maybe that added a little flavor to the market today, but I, I'd suffice it to say, you know, we've got a, let's say a pretty good bean market today, again, and beans sell close back above 15. So with beans heading up, pulling, I think probably corn up some and wheat up, it's just a nice green day across the board. Stock market's up a little bit. Um, dollars up just a little, but uh, just kind of more of a, you know, I don't know if I like the term risk on or risk off, but it certainly looks like risk on. And soybean meal continues to look good. Big surge mm -hmm. up there. Now it's not quite to its highs, but this is a quick turnaround after a pretty good plunge here a week ago. And the concern there again is that meal is well supported due to the, what will be probably shortfall of bean production and therefore meal out of Argentina. 
Yeah, and you know, thinking about that meal surge, I, I know some folks have been starting to maybe get a little worried in the soy complex with some of the sell-off we've had in recent days. But you know, then we come rip roar back here today, finding some support in that meal market. It, it feels like soybeans, this whole complex could ebb and flow here a little bit until you know maybe we get more confirmation of what's coming out of South America. Brazil, big crop, Argentina, rough weather there. I, I think that could maybe have an effect as well here, Brian. Yeah, you know, it's kind of, it looked like the, the bean mark was rolling over uh, after it put its high and after the USD report, really nice punch up. And and all of a sudden, uh, you know, today makes it, it look a whole lot different. Um, when we looked at the day the market peaked, we were down 15 and a quarter the day the market peaked, but that day we hit a high of 15, 48 and a half before closing at 15, 24 and a half. So the, the point of it is, that was a pretty rough looking day in the chart. Big bearish key reversal. Market followed through to the downside, but found support yesterday uh, at the 50 uh, day moving average and bounced off of there. But just a really big day today in March beans. And that spread between old crop, new crop continues to widen. Traders are buying the March, they're buying May, they're buying July, and they're selling November. And for instance, the, the uh, spread if you're looking at March beans versus November is now 171 and three quarters. So let's just say $1.72. To put this in some type of perspective, on the 10th of January, the spread was at 90. So the spread itself is picked up uh, close to 80 cents. And if you go back just a few days on the 5th of January, the spread was at 85. Um, that is, that's a, magnificent run that's a 90 cent run on a bull mm -hmm. spread in, in less than a month so the emphasis is definitely on the old crop and the interesting thing when i look at not to ramble on too much here but i got to get this point in when i look at the november soybean divided by december corn ratio uh mm -hmm. or figure is 2.29 so that's not buying bean acres. So I'm, I'm a bit perplexed as to why the beans seem to be kind of dying against corn. Now, new crop corn isn't rallying through the roof either, but it doesn't seem like beans are all that competitive. Maybe it's the idea that South America has a big bean crop. I don't know. With these, you know, crushing plants supposedly coming online one after another here over the next two years, you got to wonder if we're going to, you know, some, by some accounts, we need to add I don't know, 10, 14 million acres of beans somewhere. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not doing it on new crop price today. Well, and to your point, you know, we've been starting to see more reports about surveys about acreage coming up this spring here in the U.S. and some talk of maybe a few more wheat acres thrown in there just with fertilizer prices, maybe a little less nitrogen was put on in the fall, things like that. Uh, I'm hearing, you know, I think Farm Futures had a survey earlier this week, quarter bean acres were, were pretty close to equal I just wonder, you know, we start to, to your point, looking at that spread, start thinking more and more about this acre battle. I think that is going to really come into focus and be a, a market headline here the next couple of weeks, months ahead, Brian. Yeah, you, you get into the late January. Now I start talking about February and starting setting insurance mm -hmm. levels. So we're just mm -hmm. a week away from that. And that starts to have some impact. So, so there is certainly those things. Uh, I'm just surprised that November beans seem to be sort of a laggard. Uh, they're not really participating. Um, yeah, I look at the price of November beans today, 1352, and they are up from where they were here the last couple of days, had lows near 1330. Uh, but just end of December, 1427, four, you know, close to 14. So mm -hmm. we're talking about an 80 cent spill out from the highs, mm -hmm. and yet March beans are within a dime of their high so or or 20 cents so um it, it, interesting run there that the traders are, are putting the emphasis on the bull side of it maybe they anticipate that some wet weather creates planting or harvest delays to brazil and that it just it, it could be problematic to get enough beans in the pipeline quick enough and that argentina just by a natural shortfall won't have enough to get into the pipeline so it seems like the money is buying the old crop right now and that's between beans and in meal that's mm -hmm. that's a pretty big deal um soybean oil you know you wish it could be a little bit more optimistic but boy that's you know that's been struggling that's that's just not going that's the opposite direction so the traders are buying meal selling oil well and to your point you know the money buying old crop right now and when you think about new crop i also come back to the thought of well 
you know, maybe you uh, lock some floors in and, you know, I, I think you, you've said this before, maybe your first sale, even if it's, you know, if, what if it's your worst sale, you know, and, yeah. and the market goes up. So I wonder, too, if there's some risk management to take even on a smaller rally in some of these new crop contracts right now, Brian. Well, the, 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 the big picture perspective is that we're at high prices and we're at high prices, even with the sell off beans from where they were three weeks ago for new crop. We're still at high prices. So, mm -hmm. as an example, just a little over a year ago, when I was at the uh, uh, Iowa uh, Farm Show, uh, you know, beans were moving through thirteen fifty, and a lot of farmers were pretty happy. And they were talking about, you know, I, I sold some beans today. I'm going out selling beans. Makes sense. Um, then beans went higher. So and so, so well, maybe didn't make as much sense. But so everything's somewhat relative. There have been a lot of things that were supportive that made that first 1350 sale didn't look quite as good. And that is you had a drought in Brazil uh, of magnitude last year. There's no drought in Brazil in this year's crop right now. So B Brazil is a, such a big player to the world. Now there is an Argentina, but I, I keep coming back to the idea that these higher price levels, mm, they may stick around, but I, I think we're getting more and more to, you know, at some point an equal chance that they don't. And that's why they're deferred or that's why there's a discount on the deferred months. The market's not buying it either, saying that we think there's going to be, you know, crop production problems around the world. So so we have these inverted markets. So it's not time to maybe go wide open, but it's certainly time to not do nothing uh, or to, to uh, let's phrase that right. To, it's it's not time to sit and do, yeah, nothing. I think you got to take some action. It's It'll be February 1st here pretty quick. And um, it's time to move and get something in place. Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor at Total Farm Marketing, is our guest analyst here today. Brian, uh, I want to move over to livestock real quick uh, and talk about that. Cattle fairly mixed. Hogs, though, found some buying support, it looked like, there mid-session. I know we've been wondering this hog market if we're going to find a bottom anytime soon. Uh, anything you're seeing chart-wise there that kind of sparks some of that buying around midday Thursday? Well, the, the market's when it started to really, you know, went into new lows on the, on the whole downturn here. And then by midday started to turn. So I think the traders that were short might've been pretty quick to start to exit. And then you ended up with what, what we call a big reversal date. So the range today was much larger than yesterday. And we had a lower low and a higher high and a higher close. That's, that's called a bullish key reversal. So you've got that. Now I'm looking at the April contract just, because I chose that contract. This downturn is very similar to the downturn that we saw in early October, where the market just really plunged and then it roared right back. So I don't want to overpromise that we're going to roar back, but I don't think we're looking at such a heavy supply side. Mm -hmm. um, and then part of the thing that may have got the market maybe moving a little bit better is some economic data that said, well, the fourth quarter actually was not so bad. Uh, might have grown a little bit, the economy might have. So all of a sudden that sort of maybe let some of the air out of the recession talk bubble right now. And we'll have to see, you know, but there, there could have been some of that help to the meat markets as well. One of the things that you and I've talked about before is one inflation, but two, just general economics, you know, people mm -hmm. are wanting to travel. They're wanting to do this, wanting to do that. They've been cooped up, uh, but 60, what is it? 63% are living paycheck to paycheck now. So that concerns me when you talk about, you know, sending meat prices to you know, record high levels. I don't know. It just seems to me the consumer has some pretty tough choices to make. You know, you're going to buy eggs at $5 a, mm -hmm. a carton, or you're going to buy some pork, or what are you going to do? So I just think it's an overall yeah. economic malaise. Yeah, I, I would agree with that as well. And, you know, cattle... It's one of those things where, you know, we're, we're still talking bullish and looking at a, you know, a herd that it continues to get smaller and smaller. But when you throw in that economic data and the retail data and the meat case, the, you know, that, that, has, that has a pretty strong impact. And I know we've talked about that before quite a few times, Brian. Well, that's the reality. Uh, you know, the consumer yeah. goes to the store now, maybe they, you know, I've, I've talked both sides of this coin. I've said, you know, I, I'm, I'm a thinking that, you know, big ticket items start to lose their flavor, but people still eat well and they're going to buy what they buy in the grocery store if they're not buying big ticket items. Uh, on the other hand, I still think there's just a general caution because of inflation that people are cautioning what they pay for everything. 
And the reprieve maybe came in the energy complex when gas prices, instead of 4 dollars 5 or $5, dropped back down into the three-ish area, give mm-hmm. or take. Um, but the crude oil market isn't like really soft right now. It's you know back above 80 and 81, 82 dollars. So uh, don't be totally shocked if we don't see prices at the pump start to move up. And then I think we saw a report today. I can't quote it, uh, but tighter supplies of gasoline mm-hmm. and diesel um, per day's you know like the lowest in nine years. So it's a pretty tight situation. Um, this quote revenge travel you know you want to get out and move and try, yeah i get it people want to do that but mm-hmm. dollars are still limited very true very true how about that dairy market i know that we've talked dairy and we've seen the in- inflation impacts in the dairy trade what is the latest you're seeing there let's get an update on how dairy is looking right now you know it's it's a market that's struggling it's it, it's probing for a bottom we had a very healthy bullish key reversal four sessions ago little follow through the next day and then it promptly closed it lower so it couldn't hold up and then the next day was lower today we we were in the green but you're still looking at most contracts in the front months the first in fact for six months of this year uh through june all have a 18 in front of it 1897 and it wasn't that long ago we were talking about 19 and then 20 and 21 and 22 and you know even at 21 dollars you know when we talked to producers well you know the inputs are rising they weren't all that interested in uh in milk and it's like you you know we're we're really sitting kind of in a dilemma window here where the big picture concern is that world demand particular overseas and just con- conservative consumer purchasing is what's hindering milk in addition to what we've talked about before. Milk production reports show a few more cows. They show more production per cow, so an efficiency bump, and then more production overall. So you have more production compared to a year ago, and you have a shake your economic environment both domestically and worldwide than a year ago, and it, it, that shows up in milk, it seems, right away. Well, Brian, great thoughts as always. Before we let you go, any final thoughts you want to share or reiterate today? Yeah, just, you know, stay on top of things. Uh, you know, jumpy markets, uh, corn, boy, early week of December looked like it was on its, you know, way, to, to way down. It's bounced yeah. back a couple of times now, but it really hasn't gotten any gusto to it. Pay close attention. December corn, I still think we're on the slippery slope there. There's not a lot of reason for end users, even though it's a big discount to chase new crap corn right now, especially when you look at something like 590. Uh, it, it's not 682 like March is, but it's still 590. And I wouldn't be shocked if we end up you know, down the road perceptibly. The market looks like it's got more acres. And all of a sudden we talk about 178, 180, maybe 181 yield. And the market starts to think about five dollars again on the board, and and that's certainly feasible or possible. So, so just want to be you know cautious, stay on top of things, um, have good conversations with your advisor. If you want to call us, you know, have a conversation with us. But I'm not necessarily convinced that yet last year's with hindsight best strategy was sitting in your hands at this time of year. That that's the same approach again this year. Well, Brian, if folks want to reach out to you and get some advice there at Total Farm Marketing, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, that's through a phone call, 800-334-9779, or brian at totalfarmmarketing.com. Uh, uh, that's my email address, so send me an email. Um, or check out our website, totalfarmmarketing.com. Always a pleasure, Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. Thanks for joining us today, sir. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesse. That's going to do it for Market Talk today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.